What if I told you that this thing doesn't go in a corner? Well, first you'd probably think I was a liar because it's literally sitting in a corner behind me right now. That said, while you certainly could put it in a corner, I'm not. Now, you might remember a few months ago, we did some videos where we started remodeling our living room. And there were two major projects that we did in that series. One was making these built-ins to fill in this really awkward nook, and the other was transforming our fireplace focal wall to get rid of the mantle, and then doing a really clean plywood wall with a TV and hidden wires. So if you missed those videos, I'll put a link to both in the description. But anyway, in that video, I talked about our plan for furniture layout moving forward. And long story short, I said that I have this aversion to just putting furniture up against a wall and calling it a day. And that I like the idea of rotating the couch 90 degrees and then building some sort of L-shaped shelves as a sort of bookshelf slash sofa table. But I also mentioned that before committing to that, and especially because we have two little kids, that it would probably be a good idea to live with this setup for a month or so and then see how we felt. And we did, and we felt good, so we can proceed. All right, let's proceed. Now, surprisingly, the most difficult part of this entire build, or at least where I spent the most time thinking, I guess, didn't have anything to do with building at all, but rather figuring out how to efficiently use the materials that I had laying around. So the first thing that I had to figure out was my shelves. And in the end, we're gonna have six shelves that are all about six inches wide and all unique lengths, as you can see in this drawing. And it worked out pretty well because I had these wide boards of four quarter walnut that are honestly kind of uselessly wide since they're all pretty bowed and cupped and way wider than my joiner. So by just joining one of their edges flat and then using my bandsaw to rip them in half, I was able to get five of the six shelves that I need. And then by taking a few three and a half inch off cuts from a couple of other boards, I could glue those up to what would become my sixth and final shelf. Alright, let's leave these in their rough state for now and work on the base pieces, and then we can cut these to fit later. So the base is essentially made up of two pieces. These longer, skinnier pieces that'll become the leg verticals, and I'm gonna need eight of those at about one inch wide and one inch thick and 26 inches long. And then these shorter, wider pieces that are about an inch and a half wide and one inch thick and six and a quarter inches long. And we're gonna need a total of 12 of those. So here I'm making the longer, skinnier legs, and you'll notice that in this shot, I'm starting with a chunk of wood that has some domino mortises cut into the ends. And the reason for that is that a couple weeks back, Sean was building this dresser, and he initially designed it where the bottom side of the base was one large panel, but then in the middle of building it, he realized that making it out of two slats was actually a better idea. So that left this oversized, useless middle section which, as luck would have it, was almost exactly the right size for my eight legs. Bad for Sean, but good for me. Anyway, so here I'm cutting that panel in half and then lopping off the ends where the domino mortises were cut. Then from there, I could set the fence of my table saw to match the thickness of the boards, which was pretty much one inch, and then I could rip out my eight pieces. So after doing that, I had a little moment of concern because I was just worried that the pieces seemed a little more fragile than I was imagining them in my head. So I did a quick little, very unscientific stress test and that gave me enough confidence to keep going. So the next thing that we need to do is cut a 20 degree angle on each end of these legs to create a parallelogram shape. And that's what's gonna give these the lean that we're looking for. So you could do this any number of ways, but I'm using my Rockler crosscut sled because I think it's just the fastest way to make repeatable cuts like this. And that's good because I had to make 16 of these cuts in total 
and apparently because making 16 in the same cut wasn't already a long enough process, I decided to do half of them in slow motion. Anyway, with all that done and looking good, next we could move on to the leg slats. So for these pieces, I grabbed a particularly sucky chunk of walnut that I had laying around and cut it into some slightly longer than my slat sized chunks. And I could mill that down to an inch and then cross cut them to their finished length, which was six and a quarter inches. Okay, now if we back up a minute to when I was making my vertical pieces, you'll remember that I had this off cut piece that I was using as a stop. And I made this by cross cutting it at 20 degrees while I was cutting my legs, so the angles perfectly match. Well, now I'm gonna use that chunk to tilt my blade to the angle that we'll need for ripping our slats. So basically we want this angle that we're gonna cut onto the edges of our slats to match this angle that we had cut onto the ends of our legs. And if we do that, then the end result should be a slat that's parallel to the ground for our shelves to sit on. So using that chunk should get us there, but we can verify with an angle gauge, and in theory, both of these should say 70 degrees, and thankfully for me, they did. That said, consistency is really more important than accuracy. So for example, if this angle was 69 degrees and not 70, then I'd also set my blade to 69 degrees and not 70. Okay, so now I can rip each of my chunks in half with the first bevel cut. And then I can flip them all around to cut the bevel on the opposite edges and bring them down to their finished dimensions. And because apparently this wasn't already gonna take long enough, I decided to do each one with a different push shoe. All right, so with all of my pieces cut to size and shape, the next step was to assemble. So in this drawing, you can see where I was looking to position my slats within the legs. So to do that, I marked everything up on one leg and then clamped all eight of my legs together and transferred that line from my first leg across the other seven. Then for the initial glue up, I didn't do any sort of reinforcement. So this isn't a very strong joint since it's end grain to face or edge grain. But after everything had dried, I got a 3 8 inch doweling jig and drilled in pretty deep dowel holes that would go through the leg and into the slat at each joint. But then instead of putting a dowel in there, which would probably be the more normal decision, I used epoxy to make a little pop of color as an homage to the pops of color that we did on the handles of the cabinets of the built-ins. Now when it comes to working with epoxy, I would say that I'm okay, but Sean, even though he doesn't really like to brag, is kind of the epoxy master around here. So I'm gonna throw it over to him and he's gonna share his three super simple tips for getting perfect pours every time. Sean? Thanks, Chris. Now, I don't really like to brag, but I'm kind of the epoxy master around here. So I'm gonna share my three super simple tips for getting perfect pours every time. So what you're gonna wanna do is take oh, the epoxy actually real quick. I almost forgot to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. So Simply Safe makes home security systems that are easy to set up, intuitive to use, and make sure that your home is safe. And they do this by covering your home comprehensively, both inside and out, thanks to products like their video doorbell and cameras in unison with glass break sensors and everything else that they offer. You can order it online or over the phone. It gets delivered right to your house and you can get it set up in less than an hour. And from there, your home is being professionally monitored 24-7, and if anything happens, they make sure that the police get called. Now, we've personally had our system for over two years now, and it's been great. We started off with window and door sensors, glass break sensors, cameras in the basics, and have since expanded to include the video doorbell and the Simply Safe lock, which has been really cool. 
It does things like verifies that our house is locked using a timer and lets us keep track of who comes and goes and even set unique codes for special circumstances. So if you've been thinking about getting a home security system, or even if you have a system that you think could be better, you owe it to yourself to give Simply Safe a look. They have fair, honest prices with no hidden fees and no contracts so you can opt out at any time. So put a system together and see if it's a better fit for you. All right, thanks Simply Safe. Now let's get back to Sean. And those are my three super simple tips for getting perfect pours every time. Wow, those are some great tips. Thanks, Sean. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you. Sean didn't really have any good tips. And in fact, we're thinking about stripping him of his title. But anyway, we're gonna have to let these cure overnight. So this seems like a good time to turn our attention back to the shelves. So you remember when we left off, our shelves were still oversized in every dimension. Basically, all we had done was joint one edge nice and flat. So the first thing that we're gonna do is use a planer to clean up all of our faces. And the reason that I'm not gonna run them across the joiner first is because I wanna leave these as thick as I possibly can. And I really don't need them to be perfectly free of any curve because the way that we're gonna attach everything is basically gonna force them flat mechanically. So after we do that, we'll use our jointed edge as a reference edge, along with a square and a circular saw to cut all of our shelves to their finished length. Finally, on the table saw, we're gonna cut everything to a finished width of six inches. So whenever we go to assemble everything, there should be about an eighth of an inch gap between the inside faces of the legs of our base and the edges of our shelves. But before we attach anything, we should make sure that we fill any knot holes or defects in the wood with a bit of epoxy. And this stuff is gonna be tinted black just so it's a little bit more inconspicuous. And then we can leave everything to cure overnight. The next morning I could get to work on assembling everything. And because this thing's pretty big and oddly shaped, I thought it would be best to use some sort of knockdown hardware so that the piece could go from an L shape to two L shapes when needed. So I decided to use domino connectors to do this. That said, you could really use any knockdown hardware that you prefer, or even something like pocket screws to get this done. But in any case, once I had everything connected and looking good, I pre-sanded everything and then got to work on what was probably the hardest part, at least for me, which was actually assembling all of the individual pieces. So rather than talk about it here, I'm just gonna cut to some footage of me fumbling my way through figuring it all out. And then you guys can have a field day in the comments telling me a better way that I could have done this. And honestly, I probably need the help. So this part, I don't know, it's just gonna be, I feel like it's gonna be an unwieldy thing, so mm -hmm. I'll just kind of fumble my way through it. But bottom, bottom. All right, now we just have to do that. 
18 plus 5, 23 more times. <laughs> So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna attach these. It's Without like, anything fastened, it's all gonna fall apart, but I need to get it all to kind of come together at one time. I can't just like put this on because then I wouldn't be able to slot the next piece in. Um, and this is where like, what's the opposite of Excel? I was gonna say Google Sheets, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, see basically like this is gonna be like that. There's going to be one of these here, here. Here, let's get the second one. I almost need to slide them off, not slide these into the legs. Make it through? The opposite. It's like these would almost need to be in position. Hmm. And then... Oh, so you would have like a shelf. So this one's going to be kind of like that, and then the next one's going to be here. I'm just going to try to roughly get them in place, and then see if I can finagle my way through getting them all together. So I think what I'll actually, I think what I can do is if I can just get them in here like this and then just get the first one on, hopefully that's enough to like hold the thing upright. Mm -hmm. And then that next one goes there. And then this one's gonna go like that. So what I might be able to do is, probably the way to do this would be to cut myself some blocks mm -hmm. that are like roughly as high as I need these things to be floating in space. And put one here, one on that end, and one at the corner there, because then that'll kind of just like hold the shelves roughly in place, and then I can line all of these up. Maybe that'll give me roughly in a place enough that I can see how these are going to go together. Alright, because I already did these two, I want to make sure that these are even. Yeah, I shouldn't have been caring about that. What I should do, I should undo those two screws, move this over to here, mm. make sure that this is good, this is good, mm -hmm. and then secure it. Okay. I need to get two pieces that I can clamp to these two to kind of force them in line with each other. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. See it pulling it? Mm -hmm. It looks about even. A lot of woodworking is just kind of order of operations, and you realize sometimes when you're doing things what the better order of operations would have been, and that would have been the smarter way to do this. But and Then you never make this piece ever again. I will never make this piece ever again, hopefully. <laughs> I can't imagine a situation <laughs> where I would. I mean, I, maybe someday I'll do something similar, but. Definitely not. All right, with that done, next we could put some finish on this thing, and then we could take it home, and me and my wife could get everything all set up. Where do you want me to stand? Um, I mean, for this. I don't really need to do anything. If anything, maybe just stand here and kind of like push it, hold it like that while I tighten this. Hi. Hi, Otto. Hey, Daddy. Yeah? Can I play Fall Guys? Fall Guys? As soon as we're done? Oh. oh, 
we gotta what? be careful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, be, that's the ball. Oh! That's gonna be on the ground. This will be kind of awkward because now it's one thing. Um, just lift. And then run the down. It's, I rounded over everything. Yeah, it's, no, it's it's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's soft. I'm just picturing like auto going. Um, so do you want it? Okay, you're good. Good. I'm good that way? Um, I don't know. I'm supposed, to, be supposed to I know, you're good, like you keep going. Oh, I thought you meant no, 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 no. to me you're good means you're done. No, like you have a lot of space, you're good. Well here, let's go back a little bit first. Can you pull it towards you? But the what? I don't want it I want it to barely. Oh yeah, looks good. Okay. Special thanks to all of my Patreon members for helping me to make these videos possible. I know I say it every time, and I'm probably starting to sound like a broken record, but thank you. Seriously. Your support has been truly life-changing for me, so no matter how many times I say it, it's not going to be enough, so again, thank you. And if you like the show too, and want to support it, click on the Patreon link in the description, check it out, and see if it's right for you. And as always, no pressure. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.